In the previous video segment, we saw how we could use the Jigsaw Single Frame Multi uh, Region Rendering option to update a high resolution image, for example, for large format printing, and re render only small regions of it instead of rendering the whole thing again, uh, thus saving a lot of time. But what if your client wanted an animation where a camera is moving around the object and uh, the regions have to be updated individually on each frame uh, to track the objects that have changed. The uh, feature animation multi-region uh, jigsaw rendering allows this. In this case we will have to fit the regions to the moving objects in camera space according to the uh, size of the object, either the bounding box or the vertex cloud. Let's take a look at the fit option. If I select an object and also activate the corresponding region, uh, the fit option becomes available and uh, it has a padding of currently 10%. I'm going to switch the padding to 50% and if I click with the left mouse button, the uh, region is going to be adjusted according to the exact size of the object based on its vertex cloud plus 50% of uh, uh, the original size on each side. If I right click though, the region is going to be adjusted to the bounding box of the object and because the bounding box only has 8 corners, if you have 1 million vertices in the object, obviously this is going to be faster to use the bounding box. The bounding box is often a little bit more loose than the actual uh, mesh cloud. And uh, in most cases it doesn't really require padding, so this uh, fit padding is actually being ignored when performing the fast fit. The same applies more or less to the tracking if I would left click the track region option, I'm going to get the uh, frame range from the scene from 0 to 100 and uh, it's already preset to use the potentially slower vertex based tracking with 50% padding. I'll hit the button and you see that everything else is being hidden and we are tracking the actual mesh. So in some cases the region is smaller than the bounding box. If I would right click the same button, we're going to get the loose but quick object bounce bounding box tracking. Uh, this is not going to be that much uh, faster, potentially could be even slower in this case because the number of vertices is so low and we can also specify the padding. Uh, let's say that we'll enter 30%. In this case the padding will be applied and you see that the new region will always be slightly bigger than the bounding box and you can kind of see the old region being resized there and now we have a bounding box that is always uh, being tracked by the region uh, with uh, a little bit of padding around and we would have to uh, perform exactly the same for all the objects that we want to track individually I'm going to select this door handle and the corresponding region and I'll perform uh, let's say 30% padding uh, quick uh, method, no, we'll do the tight region based on the vertex cloud. It won't be much different because the bounding box is almost aligned to the camera most of the time. We have to perform the same for uh, the door handle and the back. I'm going to enable the corresponding region and again left mouse click and tracking with the same settings of 30%. And finally when this is done I will have to go and uh, select my mirror which is kind of difficult to reach behind the car. I have uh, various options here. The one way would be to actually select all the objects and deselect the rest. The other alternative would be to uh, enable this region and resize it because we're going to fit it to the object anyway and that would allow us to actually get closer to the mirror and click. Of course if I hit the fit button it's going to be uh, adjusted to the size and if I left click and track I'm going to get an animated region over time. 
If we take a look at the list of the regions, we'll see that each of them has now 101 keys, one for each frame, and the tracks are also locked, which means that if I enable them, they have now an X instead of a circle in the center, and I cannot move them and I cannot resize them. Uh, this is uh, done so we cannot uh, accidentally adjust them and uh, change the animation. If I wanted to remove those keys, I can delete keys individually by going to a certain frame and clicking the delete keyframe button uh, with the left mouse button. If I click with the right mouse button, then all the keys would be deleted from the corresponding region. If I right click now, I'm going to be uh, want. I say no, I don't want to do this, but if I would select all four regions, I could right click the delete keyframe and uh, answer yes, and all of them would be cleared. And in order to disable the locking, I can just uncheck the corresponding checkbox. At this point, I'm almost ready to render my regions of a previously rendered image. I have already rendered a sequence with the original body color at 1280 by 960 and I saved it as the uh, base sequence of 100 frames. It looks like this, camera moving around the car. So now we want to update the mirrors and the door handles and in order to produce a new sequence with the new colors without losing the old one, instead of overwriting the uh, background image as we did in the previous example, we're going to use the alternative compose of a custom image sequence and we'll pick a copy of the uh, original rendering that I just showed but uh, we will be saving to a completely different output. Let's go to the render dialog again and set a new output folder called low trim and we can even change the output name to low trim because we don't have to match the original uh, name. The original name is picked from a different folder and the frame number is going to be automatically adjusted on each frame to the current time. So uh, this is equivalent to picking a whole image sequence. Any frame from the sequence could be picked as a representative frame. In addition, we can check the cleanup tiles after assembly, so we don't uh, end up with a folder full of uh, small regions. We can produce only the final sequence if we want to. And all it's left to do is submit our job to deadline. This submission is going to take a little bit longer because other than previously, where a single job was created and each task was a separate region. Right now we are submitting in a mode where each region will have its own job and the task will be the frames and in the end we'll have a uh, assembly job which will be frame dependent whenever all the f uh, frames from a region that means uh, if you have four regions and four machines surrendering, one for each region, and they all finish frame zero, then the corresponding task in the assembly job will assemble all the frame zero and then wait for frame one to be processed. Of course, if you have many machines and uh, want to uh, render much faster, you can set, for example, 10 machines per job, 40 machines rendering all together, and of course, you'll get results much faster. With a single image, the number of machines you can get is limited by the number of regions you have defined. In this case, because we have tasks as frames, we could have up to 400 machines working on actual rendering of the regions and uh, any number of machines also, up to 100 machines in the assembly job. But since it's frame dependent, it's probably enough to have one machine that waits for the others to finish and just goes frame by frame. We will have to wait now for the deadline jobs to finish and then we will look at the result. Now the jobs are already finished and we can look in the monitor. As you can see, each of the regions took approximately four to five seconds to render. And uh, the assembly job in the end was again between three and four seconds per frame. So at this point we have a new 
load trim sequence that we can load in our RAM player and compare with the original sequence. You notice that there are no uh, regions left in the folder because we requested their removal during the assembly and you can immediately see that the mirror and the uh, handles are in the correct color and when the mirror passes through the AB divider uh, it turns into the original color so we see that our update was successful and we now have true independent sequences one sequence has the original car paint on the handles and the mirrors and uh, the other one has the lower trim plastic look and we produce the second one based on the first one by just updating a few uh, regions the more machines you throw at these regions the faster you're going to get your results so you can use the jigsaw animation multi-region rendering and the jigsaw single frame uh, feature to save hours and hours of render time and uh, produce complex sequences much faster than before using Deadline and 3ds Max.